Hey guys, episode 22 of the Vision Board Podcast. I'm Tristan Cannell, alongside me, Johnny Stofko. What's up, everyone? It's true. It's Johnny Stofko. Let's How are you? Rock. How are you, sir? I'm feeling good. Oh, yeah? yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's a sunny day in Sydney. There's blue skies. You worked feeling? out? You worked out, yeah? I haven't trained yet. I mean, from my, my excitement, you could probably think that I've trained, but, you know, that natural endorphin rush is just flowing through me at all times. <laughs> I actually had a mad session. I had a little arm pump. I saw you doing the cheeky biceps. Just a little arm pump. Biceptuals. Get myself in good Yes, sir. Mood. Uh, just a big thank you guys for um, subscribing and leaving all your awesome reviews. So if you haven't yet, just jump on quickly and just leave us a quick five-star review and subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss anything. Yes, uh, do it. Take part. Interact with us. Become part of the circle and network and social lies with us. Yeah, Johnny, that's a cool-looking flash you got in front of you. Is that from the uh, organic Yeah, it's one trainer? of our sponsors. Might as well do a little sponsor uh, bit right here. We got two of them today. We have the first one, the organic trainer. I am drinking out of their sports flask. You can find it on www.theorganictrainer.com. Other than the flask, they also have exercise and recovery teas. When you're proceeding to the checkout, use code word the Vision Board to receive 10% off of all of your purchases. Our second sponsor of this episode of the Vision Board podcast is Jack Rabbit Slim's Barbershop, located in Kings Cross Potts Point. If you're living in the Sydney, Australia area, please be sure to book in an appointment in advance with Dre. Trust me on this. I've been going there for about two years. He does his, he does the best work. The last thing you want to do is pay money and, and, and you know, somebody does lackluster with their craft is you'll never have to worry about that with Dre, Jack Rabbit Slim's Barbershop. Uh, well, guys, our special guest today is one of the, the best guys in the UFC, Matt Brown. He's ranked number six in the World Weight Division. He is a legitimate champion. Yeah, one of the best is actually an understatement. He is probably the most feared striker in UFC, MMA, he's fighting at 170 welterweight. He's been the likes in the cage with champion Johnny Hendricks, champion Robbie Lawler. Um, he just come up, can't, coming off a win against Means, so we're really excited about this one. Nice, definitely. So, guys, we won't keep you much longer. Here is Matt Brown. <laughs> The Vision Board Podcast, hosted by Johnny Stofko and Tristan Cannell. All right, so our special guest today is Matt Brown. Matt's ranked sixth in the UFC welterweight division. He has a record of 33 fights for 20 wins and 13 losses. One of the fiercest competitors in combat sports. He's been in the octagon with the likes of Robbie Lawler, Johnny Hedricks, Eric Silva. Well, he has an incredible life journey. We welcome Matt Brown. Welcome to the show, Matt. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. No worries at all. Well, Matt joins us live from uh, Colorado. How is it out there today, man? Uh, snowing like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're getting a big snowstorm. We're getting like a foot of snow today. Wow. It's like uh, contrasting out here, man. It's like nearly like 90, 100 degrees in your in your temperature out here, man. It's sunny as hell. Yeah, man. So, Matt, you actually migrated. You were born and raised in Ohio, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I was just going to say, the re I left Ohio, uh, let's see, when I was in my early 20s, specifically because of the weather, and I went past yeah. Colorado and stayed in Cali for a, w a little bit. Um, yeah, just what part of Colorado, are, you're, you're at uh, Bang Ludwig's camp, right? Uh, no, so I'm with uh, Team Muscle Farm Muscle and Farm. Team Elevation, uh. yeah, and... And uh, uh, Dwayne, you know, he, he works with some of the guys, too. So, you know, it's a collaboration. It's not really, um, like, isolated like that, you know what I mean? So, like, Dwayne brings his guys in. Um, Christian Allen brings his guys in. Um, what's his name? Uh, Elliot Marshall brings his guys. But everybody just kind of comes together for a team elevation. You know, it's a collaborative effort and makes for good training, you know. So there's a lot of good people. Yeah, man. I, I always wonder, man. I've been watching you for years. And, I, I mean, for our listeners who don't know, all you got to do is YouTube, Google, Matt Brown, The Immortal. Your stand-up, I mean, Muay Thai, it's, man, it, it's spot on. It's dangerous. Now, when you want to touch up on your wrestling, your grappling, do you have to go to another gym? This is just me wondering as a fan. Or do you bring guys in and then that's how you get your work in? Um, both, you know, I mean, it depends on the situation, but, uh, we got a good team out here, uh, a lot of good wrestlers, so I don't really have to, uh, go outside anymore. Um, in Ohio, that's, a, that was a lot of what brought me out here. Cause in Ohio, I was traveling all over the place trying to find good guys. Whereas now I'm, uh, I got everything sort of centralized in one location. 
Now, of course, I mean, you know, depending on the situation, you might have to go find somebody that's very you know, more specific than the guys you have. But, I mean, we got a good 20 guys, you know what I mean, that uh, are solid, solid guys. We got, I think, you know, six or seven in the UFC probably. So, yes, I mean, well. we're doing pretty good, you know. Yeah, that's, that can't be Jay. Um, like Johnny did say, Matt, um, obviously that, that really straightforward style that you go straight ahead, you really, your striking's awesome. Who was the major influence? Like, is there someone that you've kind of taken kind of influence from when you were growing, growing up in terms of, like, any champions out there that you kind of admire? Man, I, I've taken influence from so many different sources. Like, it's hard to even begin because um, that's kind of a, a constantly evolving thing, you know? Like, there was never... Um, I'd say that the person that originally got me into my style was uh, like Roberto Duran, um, um, uh, Chavez Sr. Uh, was was huge. A lot of the Mexican boxers. Um, I know Duran's not Mexican, but um, a lot of the Mexican boxing style. I really liked that a lot. So, um, <clears throat> and then I kind of blended that with uh, Muay Thai. So. Um, you know Raymond Deckers. Uh, it's pretty much all Muay Thai guys go forward. You know they don't they don't really back up a lot or move around. So I kind of blended the two together. Um, I'd say like my biggest guy, the guy that I watch probably the most right now is Gennady Golovkin. Awesome. Um, yeah, you know I mean I'm, I'm keeping my, every time he fights like I watch the fight ten times and study everything he does. Um, he, you know he's a big one. Uh, I mean I could go on all day. You know I I, I learned from a lot of different athletes too like lance armstrong man you know you know um, minus all the bullshit around him yeah you know he's an amazing athlete and you know I, i've read his books and stuff and um you know some influences go all the way back to like uh my my moto masashi you know uh, from book of five rings you know so i, mm. I think it goes uh, everywhere man i can draw from uh, uh thousands of different people man yeah have you watched much of um, our local boy john wayne park because both of you, of course, yeah, yeah you two just like you yeah. two are my favorite guys because you're straightforward, action packed, ready to go, and we yeah, have John yeah. on the show regularly. So it's just something I wanted to see if you've uh, had much of the, much to do with. Yeah, him. dude, I fucking love John Wayne Parr, man. You know, he's got a really unique style too. It's not your your traditional. I mean, there's a lot of traditional Muay Thai in it, but mm. he's got a lot of, uh, you know, I, I call it funk. You yeah, know, where he's just invents things as he goes along and goes with the flow well yeah he's innovative i like how when, when you were when you were saying about um roberto duran and chavez the first thing that came to my mind was that that mexican style of fighting um in your face and then you brought up you know golovkin and he's totally embraced by the um the mexican fans when he fights in america because of that style how important I, this is also what i want i've seen you fight five rounders you know on the slate for three rounders in your head, your your mental your mental strength is is in my opinion the most like evident from a fan to see how how that plays when you're fighting somebody. Are you preparing for like a three round or a five round, or are you preparing to finish every single fight? No, no I I, prepare, I do change it up, you know, when when you're doing a five rounder, but it's it's more about uh, the strength and conditioning, like the scientific side, is really what changes up. You know, what I mean, when it comes to the training, like it's the same shit. You just got to do it a little bit longer, right? Mm. Um, and when you got to do it a little bit longer, uh, that changes some things up. You got to change your recovery periods. You got uh, your time off, things like that. So a lot of things change in that sense. But um, even I, I tell you what, even when I do three rounders, you know, I, I'm in shape for a five round. I'm in shape for ten rounds. Like I don't give a fuck, man. I, I'll go all day long. Yeah, man, that's that's yeah. dope. I want seen I want seen video. I think uh, uh, the UFC put together a video a couple years ago, and I think you were still training in Ohio at the time. But you were pulling, you were doing old school Rocky style, pulling stuff through on sleds <laughs> and, and wheelbarrows. Is that is that uh, like a testament to your do you, how you would train? Like you seem like the type of guy that wants to be in like a garage and and a barn with like old school equipment to get uh um, to get your mind right. Is there kind of like a connection there with how you train and then like the preparation that goes in with it? Yeah, I think everything is, uh, can be sort of analogous, right? I mean, you know, the way you live your life and the way you train and the way you, uh, um, represent yourself, the way you talk, everything is, you know, sort of, uh, comes to fruition in the cage, right? So mm -hmm. that's why I always say, you know, the, the, uh, the cage is the best lie detector in the world, you know what I mean? Because people, you know, they, they can live a certain way, you know, and project a certain image, but then they step in that cage, you know, and that, you know, the, um, 
what do you call it, that thing that goes up and down when you're lying or whatever? The yeah, the, the, machine, detector, polygraph the, yeah the polygraph. Yeah, that. Yeah, the the fucking uh, the cage is, is the ultimate polygraph test. So, um, wow. you know that's uh, that's what it's all about, man. You know, I, I I just live honest to myself and and who I am. And you know, when I wake up and go train, um, I do uh, what I feel is the proper way of training. And a lot of that stuff is is hard to find that kind of equipment. So I actually started my own business building some of that equipment, yeah. uh, wheelbarrows, uh, sledgehammers. Um, which are better than, you know, like your Home Depot sledgehammer or whatever. Mm. Uh, we got different weights and everything. Um, you know, we're, build, we're going to be building a lot of stuff like that that just comes from that blue-collar, hard-working uh, stuff that uh, really just increases your GPP, your general physical preparation, rather than, you know, which is the most important, w- rather than your SPP, which is specific physical preparation, which your your SPP is on the mats, so there's not really a lot of stuff that you need to do for that. I mean, you need some grappling dummies and training partners is all you need, um, or, or you know more specific gear like uh, shin guards and things like that. So I'm building stuff for the uh, GPP. What, what's that company called? What's your brand called? Uh, Immortal. Yeah, it's Immortal Combat Equipment mm. or ICE for short. Is, is that um, the stuff we got you're using in Westside Barbell? Some of those, uh, some of those yeah, videos. Yeah, yeah. So, so a lot of it was influenced by Westside Barbell. So. Yeah. So what Westside did when the, you know when it comes to powerlifting, you know Westside is by far the number one strongest gym in the world. Like there's not even a close second. Hundreds of world records, strongest man in history. Dave Hoff is there right now. Mm. He came up through Westside. So a lot of uh, the influence came from Westside. A lot of the stuff we were doing. Uh, that's where I learned a lot of that stuff and um, how to do it safely and how to use it within a, a program and within a methodology rather than just doing it all the time or doing it randomly you know it fits into a scientific protocol awesome matt let's talk um your next fight obviously in brazil you got damien mayer you're uh you're obviously a striking expert he's bjj expert it's a very con- contrasting style can you just tell us about a little bit about what you're anticipating going into brazil yeah, I anticipate uh, striker versus grappler. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't think there's too much question behind that, right? Like, we know what he wants to do. He knows what I want to do. Yeah. Let's see who's prepared. Let's see who put in the time, and let's see who can do it. Um, I, you know, I've, I've been in these types of fights before, and I've always failed in this type of fight before. This is the worst type of fight for me. That's why I asked for this fight, and that's why I said I want this fight. I believe I'm ready for that style now, and I believe I can defeat that style now. And there's only one way to find out. You got to fucking face that fear, man. Like, I don't want to be ducking the, you know, the worst matchup out there for me. I want to walk right in there and, and know that, uh, you know, when I beat him, I earned that shit yeah. and uh, I paid the price. I paid my dues and it was, and in the end, it'll be worth every minute. And that's win or lose. Even if I go in and lose, look, then it's just another uh, bump on the journey. And then I'll say, okay, this is why I lost you, right? The, you know, the old saying is uh, you learn uh, or you win or you learn. There's no lose. Yeah. So that's how I'm looking at, at, at every fight, and that's uh, how I'm approaching it. And um, I, I don't get me wrong. I fully anticipate winning this fight. I believe I have every tool in the box to do that. Mm. Uh, but that's how I look at things now. I don't, I don't think about uh, winning and losing so much. Awesome. And with five versus six, you have to expect that the winner – would pretty much be right in line for a title shot at your old at your old mate Robbie Lola. So well, he's fought both. Too. Yeah, I, I, I hope so. I hope so, man. You know, it's it's going to be a tough one. You know, our division is really Killers. stacked up. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. You know, it's it's a Shark Tank right now. You know, and all these guys. So it's it's kind of a tough call. You know, we got. Um, I'm anticipating a Condit Lola rematch. Mm. That's what I, I'm expecting, um, and. To be honest, what I'm expecting is Condit to win and then to have a trilogy fight. Yeah. So I think the belt might be tied up for a while, you know, and that's uh, that's a very likely possibility, right? That's not, you know, out of the question at all. Um, so with that said, you know, we also have Woodley, who was promised a title shot, who doesn't deserve it, but yeah. is, you know, sitting and, and waiting, uh, waiting it out. So he might be waiting for a long time. Um of course, me and Damien, you know, who, whoever wins this fight, uh, myself, you should, you know, should get this, uh, should be up there in line also. And then you also, you got Hendricks and Thompson fighting this weekend too, right? Yep. You know, Hendricks wins. I mean, he's always, you know, he, I mean, he had the, the title not too long ago and a lot of people don't believe he ever even lost it. So, yeah. 
Um, he's going to beat Thompson pretty easily, I think. So, you know, that should be uh, – it's going to put him right back up there. Um, of course, Rory's always up there. I mean, it, like I said, we got a, a shark tank, man. Yeah, 170 is brutal. I wanted to ask you a little bit about um, – you, you know, you, you said that, that the type of – you know, draw Maya is, it's the worst thing, you know, it's, it's a matchup nightmare for a striker like yourself. Are you doing anything differently? Like, does a guy like you, I mean, it's worked, you're at the highest level, man, of combat sport, you're at the highest level, and when you get to that highest level of any sport, everyone is as good, it's just like the, a little bit, you know, maybe some inches, a game of inches. Do you ever reconfigure the way you do things, go about fighting grapplers, or are you just going, going about it like you always have? Are you mixing it up at all? No, I mix things up every camp, really. I mix things up. I try to mix things up every fight. The problem is is when I get hit, um, I quit mixing things up, and I just want to fight. You know, I just want to punch you back so bad. And that's just a mental issue. So I'm doing a lot of mental uh, training to try to be a little bit more disciplined in there. I think I need to be more disciplined with Damien. And, uh, you know, he's not going to oblige to having a war with me. Um, I mean, he can't. I, I hope to God he does so I can knock him out in 30 seconds. But yeah. he's not going to do that, right? He's, that's not his game. It's not his lifestyle. It's not the way he thinks. It's not um, – you know, he's surely, you know, not the kind of guy like me, right, out there, uh, you know, carrying wheelbarrows. And, you know what I mean? He's not a rocky type of guy. Like, he, he's, I'm yeah. sure that he's, he, you know, he's bench pressing in a gold gym or something, you know, so he's trying to look pretty. So um, that's how he wants to win. He doesn't want a dirty fight. So um, nothing wrong with that. You know, I'm not, not criticizing that because, you know, I understand the sport that I'm in. Everybody's a little different and everybody has their ways, and I respect all styles. Um, the only thing people I don't respect is people like a Woodley who, dodge. you know, just want to fight for, yeah, just duck and dodge and, fight, you know, try to pick each fight just to try to get a title. This is just simply not a martial artist, not a samurai, not a warrior. So, um, that's what I don't respect. Do you know the, do you know the phrase, the, uh, samurai phrase, um, Don Tatsu? Have you heard of this? Don I've probably heard of it, yeah, but I don't. I, yeah, I don't Don Tatsu, know. I, I used to work, for, uh, with a leadership company out of Vegas and they, they use the samurai warrior and they talk about... The, the most savage warrior of, of all humans were the, were the samurai, and they never wore back armor because they never retreated. And it, it's, it's, always nice. about, it's always talking about progressing. And when you say that, that's the first thing I think of, of like, why would you, a true warrior, a true and, you know, mixed martial artist wouldn't pick. They would just, you know, throw down. I like that. Matt, um, that's beautiful. How do you spell Yeah, it's D-A-N-T-O-T-S-U. Always progressing. Yeah, yeah, check it out, man. I think I think it'll it, it'll suit you. I like it. Yeah, man. Awesome, Matt. Like on our program, we also like talking not just about fights, just about life in general as well. Just over the last year or so, yeah. I've um, heard you speak a lot about obviously changing your own life, following a new path, and just little phrases like that. Can you just explain a little bit to the audience what what you kind of mean by that? So, I, I think it's easy to get caught up in. Um, what would you say? Just it's easy to forget the 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 warrior path, right? It's easy to forget. You know, this UFC shit's blowing up, man. And everywhere I go now, people recognize me. Everywhere, uh, people wanna, um, you know, they want to get on their knees for me. They want to kiss my feet. You know, they wanna. Uh, people love me. They worship me. And it's easy to let that get to your head, right? It's easy to um, let that uh, affect your life. So in Ohio, where I was at, you know, I was surrounded by people that I'd known for a long time. Um, and there's a lot of people coming out of the woodwork I never, you know, cared about before. And they never cared about me until, um, you know, my status in the UFC. Um, even, I'll tell you, even men from, you know, when I was in the UFC earlier, like on a losing streak, you know, and people, you know, treat you differently, talk to you differently. Um, you, you see those things and it's easy to let that get to your head. Um, it's the first time uh, in my life I ever had money. So, you know, it's easy. Money is, is a fucking evil thing, man. Mm -hmm. And it's a, it can that, that that can just grab on. That can just leech on to your to your mind and, and take it out of you. Um, you know, I have kids that take a lot of energy out of me. So what I'm getting at is a lot of things to clutter up the mind. Right. So what I what I did was to come out here to Denver it just happened to work out perfect that, you know, I got sponsored by Muscle Farm. I had a great team out here that wanted me out here anyway. Uh, I've always wanted to live out here on top of that. So all these things came together, and I like to say I dropped off a mental trailer in Ohio, 
and just left all that baggage there. Came out here with a clean slate, uh, nothing on my mind. Um, I changed a lot of things um, in, in, the, in sense of, like a perfect example, just tiny, tiny little things. Like every morning now when I wake up, first thing I do is make the bed and take a shower, brush my teeth, rather than check my phone. Like I don't even look at my phone. I don't look at the time. I don't look at the date. I don't look at the weather for the day. I don't see who, you know, what asshole is texting me at six in the morning. I don't, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah. like, and that's such a small thing because what I do is the thought process behind that is the first thing that you do in the day is, uh, um, is, is an accomplishment, mm -hmm. right? Rather than the first thing you do is, 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 is collecting input so something being put into your brain first thing you're doing is giving something out and accomplishing something and feeling good about something and something uh, literally as small as like making your bed first thing in the morning like changed my life you know what i mean i just felt better every day um so that's just a, an example i could give you a hundred things like that that i do but that, that's like a perfect example um of, of how i've turned my life a little bit and that helps you maintain your focus, like I said, it's all analogous to uh, what happens in the cage. Yeah, that's that's. Uh, I, I love that that mindset. I, I talk about that a lot. Like Buddhists will call that that first initial true human experience of awareness is uh, the the start of our um, awakening, and the rest of your life from that move, moment forward is your path of enlightenment. So you mentioned earlier yeah. about you're doing things mentally, working on your mental discipline. Are you doing anything specific when you say that? Are you are you meditating? Are you maybe doing isolation tanks? Anything specific? Or are you just spending, um, you know, maybe writing? Do you have any anything to 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 piggyback off that? Yeah. So um, I, I've done meditation for years and years. Um, so that's something you know I'm trying to develop and enhance more and more all the time. It's difficult to stay consistent with that. Um, you know, being again, like was, that's what I dropped off at that mental trailer mm. and try to unclutter my life where less is more. Right. So I can spend more time doing things like that. Um, I have a sauna here in my basement and I just jump in the sauna, man, and just meditate. You know what I mean? And yeah. um, I think that's a great way to do it. You know, uh, there's something about it, man, when you're just sweating your balls off like that and, you, you know, you're getting in that uh, that deep zone. There's something about that, man. I don't know what it is, but I think there's something more to it. You have, know? have you heard? So there's a. Are you familiar with uh, Dr. Rhonda Patrick? Yeah, with uh, the Joe Rogan. Yeah, girl. did you? Is that? Do I always because what we use a dry sauna a lot too, and I always thought the same. I was like, I don't know why this is good for me. And then after I heard her, after I heard her speaking about it, and she mentions like yeah. heat shock proteins and the synthesis. And, yeah, it's it's definitely. Uh, um, uh, an awesome tool to use naturally. Matt, yeah, so, so I use I use the uh, infrared sauna actually, okay. which is, is far better. Yeah, and uh, so I was actually reading this research the other day. Interesting enough, that this might have something to do with it too. Is um, so they did this, these things where people were on these balance boards and they read while they're on the balance board, okay. like just one paragraph while they're on the balance board. And they stay on the balance board for like three to five minutes, and these the people that stood on a balance board compared to the people that were sitting down reading um, retained the information something like twenty times better, like some enormous amount better. So, for whatever I don't know, I feel like somehow that might relate to the sauna. That focus. Um, I don't know how to I, I don't know how the fuck to articulate that right, but <laughs> somehow. I, I, <laughs> I don't want to go off on some tangent here that I can't even explain. It's but, all good. Um, it seems to me like you know somehow like with your body sweating, that blood rushing. Yeah, it's probably doing something something with your neural pathways. Yeah. Um, maybe Rhonda Patrick will be able to explain <laughs> yeah. it. But I, I think maybe yeah, it makes sense. I mean, you got the person on the on the balance being reading, focusing all their intent on the specific thing, and then you're in the infrared sauna, disconnected from everything, focusing everything on nothingness. I think there could be a maybe a, a balance or a connection with that. Yeah. But I'm no doctor. <laughs> so. so so I don't know if, it, if there's something about where when they're on that balance board, they're not focusing all their attention on the paragraph, right? Because they have to balance, right? Yeah. So it's almost, Interesting. Yeah, so it almost, oh, I see. Yes. Yeah, so it's like two different uh, types of folks. I don't know, man. I, I'm not, I don't know all the research. Uh, I, I need to read about it a little bit more, but I found it really interesting, and I felt like, you know, you know, those deep thoughts that I do in the sauna that kind of stick with me a little better when I'm in the sauna may be somehow relevant to that research I was just reading. Yeah. So 
I don't know. It might be a completely pointless conversation I'm saying here, but I'll look into it. I'll send you an email, man. I'm interested in stuff like that. <laughs> Matt, Matt, do you yeah, put a talk? I'll look, I'll look up the name of the board because it wasn't your normal balance board. Okay, it was yeah. it kind of a, a name to it. Okay, yeah, I'll, I'll check I'll, it out. Fine. Matt, how long do you actually spend in there? Is it something you just until you feel a little bit dehydrated, or do you have a specific time kind of in there, man? Um, no, it depends. So, my old sauna was a lot stronger and more powerful um so i would only spend about 45 to an hour um i have a new sauna now which is a portable sauna um i got it from therasage and it's more of like i don't know i think it's like for older people or something but it's is that, way is that the one i was throwing you on instagram you had kind of like a big jacket yeah. thing on yeah exactly yeah so the thing is awesome but it takes way longer to start sweating yeah it takes at least like 30 minutes to even begin sweating because um, I don't know. I mean, it's just not, not as powerful, you know, and it's it's a portable sauna, you know what I mean? So it's not going to be as strong, right? Yeah. Um, and, it, it, you know, it's not – doesn't have as good a sealing, you know what I mean? Uh, our, the walls aren't going to seal the heat in as well, things like that. But anyway, so – so now, you know, when I sit in there, I mean, I'm, I'm in there a good hour and a half, hour, 45 minutes uh, on, on – a normal occasion, but I don't, yeah, I do, to answer your question, I don't set a time. Yeah. I mean, I go basically until I can't take it no more. Awesome. Matt, just so what I, one of the things I try, one of the things, sorry to interrupt, yeah. that I try to do is, is increase my tolerance, uh, to the, the heat, okay. right? Which Rhonda Patrick was talking about that, you know, how it, it helps with that. And, uh, um, when I have to cut weight, you know, it, it's not like a sudden new thing to my body, right? The yeah. day before a fight. It's not all of a sudden I'm doing something, you know, my body's never seen before. Um, you know, in my, and with my tolerance being higher, I can sit in there longer without uh, being exhausted as quickly. Okay. Matt, are you still, like, comfortably making um, the weight limit at the moment? Have you changed, kind of, your, your approach to a nutrition, like, the older as you kind of get? Um, I actually did change my nutrition recently. You cut out a little bit, but I think you're just asking about my nutrition, right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So um, the the thing that I'm doing now, so I used to do the, the common everyday program of eating every two to three hours, um, what, two – the two to three big meals with little snacks in between. You know, I, I did all that, you know, the basic uh, thing that everybody follows. Now I've actually completely changed it up and I feel better than ever. So um, I do intermittent fasting okay. and I do, so I go from 10 o'clock at night till noon the next day and don't eat a single thing. Yep, I'll only have a cup of coffee in the morning um, just to wake me up and get me going. And then I train on an empty stomach uh, first thing in the morning. Um, and then throughout the day, I eat two big meals and then protein and that's it. Okay. During that fasting time, that first, um, training program, is that, is that just a normal run or is that inside the gym, grappling, sparring, anything like that? Yeah, we change it up all the time, but it's, um, it's an intense workout first mm -hmm. thing in the morning. And I'll tell you what, I actually, it's unreal, man. Like I feel I have more energy now in my first training session than when I used to eat beforehand. Okay, that's interesting. We might have to um, try that out for ourselves. Yeah, man. I, I I've heard you you on a couple of different podcasts. I heard you give an interview one time about I think it was the upcoming home and Rousey fight, and you were just talking about um, seeing holes in Rousey's game. You didn't predict the win, but you were able to sit back and be very visceral about each one's approach and see the holes in the game, and you almost made a plan of attack you know, using Holmes' um, strengths. So when you're you're preparing for an opponent, you got your team around you, are you leading that charge or are you relying on other guys to do that work for you? Okay, well, first off, I actually did call it. Yeah, did you, uh, did you commit I, to it? I wasn't yeah. sure. Okay, okay, I didn't want no, to. No, I rejected my statement. So, <laughs> so one week I had it and then I was like, Man, I, I got sucked into all the media hype, man, and everybody was like, you're fucking crazy. I can't believe that you would pick her. Like, you're crazy. I mean, I was just getting lambasted, you know what I mean? And I was like, shit, man, am I that stupid? You know, like, I've made some stupid picks before, you know? So, uh, yeah, so I ended up, you know, retracting it. And I said, look, Holly has a really good chance. She'll probably give her the best fight, but Ronda's going to win. And... You know, I ate my words, man. I should have stuck with my guns, and I shouldn't have been a bitch about it. But anyway, yeah. Um, 
I do lead the charge, man, 100%, yeah. you know, because, and I believe every fighter should do that because mm. you have to believe in it, man. And um, I'm the CEO of this business. You know, that's something I've learned over over time, um, especially, you know, starting my own businesses on the side and doing things like that. I've learned that, you know, nobody else cares about your business as much as you do. You Like, you're not going to find an employee that cares as, as much as you do, so don't expect them to. You know, before I would, you know, I, I would just trust my coaches, but then I would realize, like, you know, okay, they're maybe watching the guys fight, you know, two or three times, maybe even 10 or 15 times. I'm watching that motherfucker every night. I'm dreaming about the son of a bitch. I'm waking up, you know, breathing this guy, you know what I mean? And it's like, why, why would I trust? I mean, I, obviously, I'll listen to him. I look at him as more as advisors, right? Yeah. So mm. it's like, how, you know, but why would I put all my trust in someone that doesn't have to go in there and do it? And someone, you know, so I, I have to believe in it yourself first. Yeah, that's a perfect segue for my next question. Tristan and I like using this platform to um, give our listeners advice, inspiration, motivation. Could you, th- our, our fans listening out there, um, could you give us some inspiration, motivation to somebody who may be struggling with something in their life and some advice on how to get through it? Man, that's a really tough one because you have to be so broad and general with advice like that, right? Yeah. You know, and that's, I mean... I'm sure it sounds like, you know, you guys talk about some uh, Buddhist stuff and Zen and stuff like that. And I mean, that's the easiest advice there is, man. You know, these people, um, you know, a lot of people look to Christianity or Catholicism or whatever. And in all reality, I mean, you know, I don't want to offend anybody's religion, but that that stuff ain't nowhere near what Buddhism is. You know, man, that stuff really help help you. you know, mentally for anything. And, and there's, I think there's nothing else that could help a person than just being in the now. And that's what, of course, what, what Buddhism talks about, you know, living in the present and because everything, all the anger, the rage, the fear, the anxiety, all that stuff is a result of past or future. It's never, rarely is it a result of what's happening now. So I guess even probably never, right? Like, I mean, unless, you know, even, you know, if you're free falling, you know, from uh, an airplane, like right now you're still alive. So, mm. you know, what do you have to be afraid of? Right. Um, obviously, but you know, what's going to happen, but still that's the future. So what, you know, what's there to be afraid of? But, um, that's a pretty intense, uh, example, I guess. But, you know, the, the fact is, yeah, I mean, I'm sure, um, you guys could probably articulate it uh, probably better than me, you know, about just living in the now and, um, you know, just just not letting uh, uh, the past and the and the future affect your thoughts. Rather, you know, letting the right now affect your thoughts. Yeah, most definitely. Well, Max, Thanks, um, just before you leave us, can you just let us know where we can? Obviously, you've got the great MMA debate. I've been listening to that quite a bit lately. I love that show, man. You've been doing some great work on that. <laughs> Thanks. So, yeah. yeah. So, um, just where the people can find you online and also on social media, man. Yeah, so I'm all over the internet, man. I or, at I am the immortal on Twitter and Instagram. Um, I just opened the Twitter account for the uh, Immortal Combat Equipment, which is at Immortal Combat Equip. Yep. No M E N T at the end. Um, was uh, the Facebook fan page, uh, the Immortal Matt Brown. Mm. Um, see, I got a website that I can't remember the name of, so that doesn't do me any damn good. <laughs> just Google uh, it. Matt Brown. <laughs> The immortal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, uh, I, we're redoing the website, so that's uh, that's the reason for that. Uh, it'll be up later. Um, yeah, I guess that's, that's the only places to find me. Awesome, oh, Matt. Well, thanks again for your time. We'd love to have you on again. Hopefully, after your fight, we'll leave you to prepare for a little bit now. But um, we'll we really to appreciate it, Matt. Man, thank you. You know, Matt's in the middle of a camp, yeah. and he took the time to talk to us. Thanks a lot, buddy. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, no worries, man. Good times. Yeah, you be good. Awesome, you be good. Awesome man. stuff, man, yeah. Matt, man, Matt Brown. The immortal. Um, probably the biggest thing I took out of that is the humbleness of a man that's ranked number five in the world. He's taken on all comers. Yeah. Like, His I, life's gone different directions. Yeah, I like I like the fact that, I mean, how it, it's interesting. It was like this, this measuring of, like, intent, but also precise. But he's just himself. Yeah, he's not trying to be sometimes unfiltered. When you get to the top of the rankings, you can tell that sometimes a fighter or even an athlete, even a writer, anything, they lose their way, they lose who they are. Yeah. You get what I mean? Like, yeah. Sometimes it, the marketing side comes out of them instead of 
who their actual persona is, but Matt's still the same dude that he is. He's just grown as a person. And yeah, it was good to hear him. I don't think I've ever seen Matt Brown laugh. Like just at the very end of that conversation, you had you know you you threw his uh you know his podcast is is awesome. Um, the MMA debate. He he tackles some um you know controversial issues that we really didn't want to touch base with today. But he talks a lot about the drug testing and his opinion on it. Matt's a very very open mind, not open minded openly talks about his stance on steroids and how he feels, you know, the ban should be, I think, what is it, first time two years? He's talking about it should be four to lifetime, mm. which I agree with him. You know, he, he had that debate but about... It's good that he's actually, because realistically, he employs the UFC, so a lot of other people, you know, skate on eggshells, so to say, don't want to give their opinion. But yes, yeah. that's, that's very open. You know? Yeah, and you know what? The UFC, as of late, Man, it's kind of, I don't, you know, I don't work for the UFC, neither do you. We just, pretty much the info we get is from our sources, our friends who fight in the UFC, and some of our friends who write. And it's almost like they, if you get on their bad side, they kind of bully you, bulldog out. And that's what I'm kind of, you know, with Stitch, for instance. Stitch, no one truly knows what really happened with Jacob Duran, but, you know, media, Stitch came out and said, hey, man, I make my money on my sponsors. You know, and then when the whole Reebok deal came out, he spoke against it, and guess what? A week later, he, he's not employed anymore. Look at Brendan Schaub. Up. Same type of thing. He's very, he's been very vocal about the contract issues and about the sponsorship issues. And I just read, an, um, saw an interview last week that Shab now he used to do that little spot analyst mm. for Fox Sports. Yeah, he's been cut. He's well. been cut cut out of that, and he's just doing his podcast, which you know it's just interesting. Well, at least yeah? he's not a sellout. You know what I mean? Like at yeah. the end of the day, the reason why they were um, obviously upset was because in the UFC, while the top dogs make some good money. The lower tier guys, they make their money from sponsorship because realistic. What you were saying the other day, they make two or three. Two thousand. So you get a guy like we'll use Luke for instance, um, Stevens, and you know he's first fight in the UFC, doesn't have a contract yet. You're getting paid two thousand to fight, two thousand to win, mm. and fortunate enough for Luke, he got a you know you get a performance of the night bonus, which is fifty G's, which helps that puts you on your path. But a lot of these guys aren't getting it. They only give I think four awards out over twelve fights on a card. So you're right that it. Back to Matt, let's keep it focused on him. It's very refreshing to see a guy who sticks true to his guns, per se. Okay. I like what he said about um, his opinion on, you know, Maya. He was diplomatic about it, about how he's training. But then when he got to Woodley, because, uh, you know, he called, he pretty much called Woodley a punk. What did he say? Yeah, yeah he, much, No respect yeah, for him. Yeah, he's been sidestepping a lot of opponents. Woodley right? hasn't fought in a year. Mm. He hasn't fought in a year, Matt, you know, and not, not due to so much injury, just because he's been waiting and... I just got a tweet about um, the UFC is about to announce Lawler versus Woodley. That's not official yet, but that's kind of what Brown predicted. How do you think he would go against Lawler? I think Lawler would hurt him. I think that fight that. ends in the first round. Yeah, I think Woodley, Woodley's, you know, his background's wrestling. He was a high-level collegiate wrestler. Body type as a striker, and his striking's coming along. Um, he's fighting out of America Top Team down in Coconut Creek. That's what I saw. And it's be interesting because Lawler trains down there. I'd have to double check my references. It's, these things, you know, guys switch gyms all the time. But in a stand up striking match, man, I'm taking Lawler 10, 10 out of 10. Mm. Yeah, he's a little bit bigger too in height. Isn't it's it interesting to see all the guys um, align themselves now with big camps with solid 10, yeah. 12 guys that are really, really Just, high class and, um, and, caliber ranked UFC fighters, you know what I mean? Like, What does that tell you about it though? The type of people you hang out with? Yeah, exactly. We've said that a few times about yeah. that kind of getting better from other people. What did Tate um, say? What's Tate say about that? I need you to try. try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's very important. Um, but it is kind of getting, there's a bit of a few robberies out there now. There's like five or six really big camps there that are really dominating in the UFC. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, we, we talk to fighters a lot, and so, you know, depending on if their website's up to date or if they're tweeting a lot, you know, sometimes you'll catch a guy in a camp and he just changed. Uh, I'd happen, I, I, was, I swear Matt was fighting out of, um, you know, with... Uh, Bang Ludwig, yeah. Dwayne Ludwig's camp. I think he was like yeah. last year, and I think he moved very late last year. Yeah, and he December. says those guys, those guys still come up, and so they come to him now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think he's probably in that position where he can kind of call the shots, isn't he? So that was interesting how he said he's the CEO because I know some guys they hire, they, you know, they they hire teams around them. Yeah. I don't want to put guys on blast, but I know there's a, a recent champion in the heavyweight division where he would just hire guys around him to basically have the game plan written for him rather than saying all right look these are my strengths and weaknesses you know there's two sides to that story um in regards to kind of gets to feel the, his opponent a lot better seeing that he does his own research instead of relying on like yeah. tapes from other people and just different opinions because you're going to see something different from what i'm saying 
but yeah. it's always good to see from your own perspective. What's your? Uh, are you familiar with what Matt brought up about GPP and SPP? He was talking about your general physical preparation versus specific physical preparation. Yeah, in what regard? He, he was talking about that in training when he was talking about. Um, you know, GPP, SPP type of body training. If, if he's going to be, if he's grappling, if he's grappling versus somebody, mm -hmm. he was. I, I, I'm. A, I wrote notes, so I'm going to research. I've no, I've never yeah, heard of that. I'm I was wondering to, if that was a jiu-jitsu. Maybe ask Graham. I have, I've heard Graham talk about that sort of stuff with his preparation for his rugby league players. Okay, so maybe we'll very reach sport out specific to, type of stuff. I think it is very. I think it's like sort of time based sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, to make it like common, kind of mimic what's going to happen. How about but of course, cage? I could be totally wrong. We'll ask Graham and we'll get back to you guys on that. How about the cage being the best lie detector? That's true. Oh, my. I've never heard anyone put it that yes, way. You can't. Well, you can't run. You can't hide. No. You can't, you, I, yeah, I've never heard anyone put it that way. can't get any way. help. You're by yourself. Yeah, Matt was just, man, he was very... It's interesting. If you watch him fight, he says he, he has a game plan, but then when he gets hit, he fights out of emotion. And he said he's going to work on that, mm. but he's he is what you call a tactical striker. Yeah, he is the best Muay Thai, in my opinion, in MMA, and um, in the way he speaks, and you can tell in the way he carries himself, and the way he lives his life, it's it resonates in his actions, how he speaks, what he talks about, his passion. It's pretty interesting how there's a carryover effect. That's going to be a very interesting clash. Like obviously, he couldn't really give too much away with the Maya clash. Obviously, he's been. I would suggest he's probably been training a lot more with BJJ guys because that's. As he pointed out, that's his weakness. But. Yeah, yeah. Damian Maya, if you guys don't know, if you're listening, is the highest level of jiu -jitsu, uh, Brazilian jiu-jitsu on the planet. Um, and in my experience watching these these fights at the highest level between a jiu-jitsu guy and a striker, it usually ends up with the jiu-jitsu guy winning. Mm. Yeah, it, I mean, this is this is saying if a guy is specifically, you know, predominantly a striker. Matt's lost to. Yeah, the, all, he's he's he never been knocked of, out. He's he been, been submitted. Seems like. He is priming himself to make a big statement. It's huge. He's, he's been waiting. Cotton. He's not twenty five anymore. Matt's in his mid thirties. You know, he he's been doing he's been doing it for a while. Maya's in his mid to late thirties. So this is do or die for Matt Brown. Yeah, he wins no. his fight in Brazil. He five probably gets six man. He probably gets the. He, I would say he gets the winner of mm -hmm. if that Woodley and Lawler fight does go down, or he might have to fight like a Condit. Yeah, um, like an eliminator. For the yeah, Rory or McDonald or fight. He's pro Matt's probably two, two fights or max fights away from the title. title. Yeah, yeah he, he was really close with Lawler. That went to a decision. Mm. That, that was, was a five-round eliminator, yeah, wasn't that, it? Yeah, that was a war. Matt Brown loves being in bloodbaths. That's what he talks about. He embraces it. That's why it was really exciting having him on. Really stoked about it. Yeah, I was really interested, actually, when he was talking about, you know, when we talk about all the guys that he's fought, yeah. top-level guys, yeah. know, they're always the top ten guys, so he's not sidestepping anyone. That's the thing. And I think too, that's man. something that you can kind of translate into life when times get tough. Instead of trying to search for the easy option now. Yeah. yeah, he was talking about fear, and he was saying that about how if there's something that scares him, if there's something that he's he, he fears, he's not going to run away from. He's going to face it head on, and that's something you and I talk about. That can have a carryover effect with everyone in our lives. Yeah. If there's something that and fear could be replaced with weakness, you could substitute that fear word. That fear word really doesn't have you know a specific meaning. It can mean something that you're avoiding. But it is scary. Like I can just just from my own personal perspective, say that, you know, sometimes the road is tough and sometimes, you know, sometimes you do want that easy way out. But the best path is, from my own personal experience, is to actually, you know, embrace it and try to figure out ways to actually get yourself better and get yourself back on track because at the end of the day, it's f far more fulfilling yeah. than just getting handed it to you, do you know what I mean? Yeah, everything I'm, I'm working on myself is realizing that we create fear, though individually we create fear it's usually something that somebody told us was a fear it wasn't born we weren't born afraid of things these are conditioned responses these are belief systems somebody else put upon us that the older we get the more life beats us down we start believing so at that same moment we do have the ability to stop believing and tell ourselves hey I'm not afraid of this mm. you know th this thing is not it, this is not an immovable object do you know what I mean? Whatever yeah. that may be. And then it's important to devise a plan to, to make steps of progress and then put yourself in the best position to um, move forward. It's also great to see, um, you know, obviously Matt's had a lot of adversity early in his life. New, newly, um, he's a pretty young father as well. So it's great to see the different perspectives that he's kind of got in life over the last couple of years. And he's kind of, it's good that he's sharing it too, I feel. Yeah. Because he's someone else that people, it's not um, that they got more respect for him, but he is in the public eye every day. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Guys, and if we didn't really want to 
dive too deep into it, but if he was going to bring it up, we would have chatted about it. Mm. But Google Matt Brown's nickname, The Immortal, it, it suits him as being a, a fearful fighter, but some that go along in his past before he was a fighter that his friends had given him. And um, he, he really uh, has been through the ringer. The guy's been through addiction, depression, um, and, and now overcoming all of that, you kind of get to see that warrior mentality. They talk about if you, it takes a man or woman to go to the lowest depths of, hu of human possibilities to understand what it takes to get out of it. Get and, back up. and if you do get out of it, you become a warrior. Absolutely. You don't have to be a fighter to be a warrior. Mm -hmm. That met, Matt's mental strength you can see, Absolutely. you can hear. There's different ways you can be a warrior. Yeah, we were able to see it because we, we, we were Skyping and you know we released these strictly audio, but just watching his mannerisms, how he speaks, his intent, you could tell, man, this this is a confident, yeah, humble, this is not make believe. diplomat. This is yeah. a guy that, you know, this is he's just willing to share his, his own passion about life and his own perspective, which is cool. Yep. Um, Johnny, actually, what I was going to touch base on you this morning, it was actually a very interesting fight I want to chat to you just quickly about. Yeah. Canelo yeah. just announced a fight with Amir Khan. I didn't hear that. It would, is it? Yeah. I'm pretty excited about that. That's an now, interesting fight well, because Canelo can't, you know, the only guy that beat Canelo was Floyd Mayweather. Floyd, yeah. When you think about stylistic fights in terms of a mover, yeah. a fast fighter, yeah. obviously Amir Khan I just, is, bigger, is probably the same similar, maybe a little bit bigger than Mayweather. I'm, so I'm just thinking problem. though that this isn't, Chin. this isn't the same Canelo that fought Floyd. No, no way. This Canelo he's grown, is a grown greased a lot. oil machine. He's, he has that mental strength from that loss. Mm. And he's he's a confident fighter, and Amir Khan, um, you know his his resume speaks for himself. He's flashy, he's quick, he's smart. He gets in your Prescott head. Prescott absolutely floored him though. Yeah, it, it, I don't. You know what? I don't think it's gonna be a tough. Be I don't think it's gonna, gonna be a tough fight for Canelo. I'm be picking. Very interesting. I'm, I'm I'm predicting Canelo in five. Canelo. Really? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking Canelo ends that fight before half. You know. I don't think I Canelo would have the cards with him. Huh? I don't think he want to go to twelve round cards. No, I, I don't I think, think this fight's going to be. I think if a if uh, Canelo can get him out in the first six rounds, which I think is very possible. Yeah, I think that'll be his game plan. A Miz chin. If it goes anywhere past, if it gets into that 10th, 11th, 12th, I think, I mean, uh, sorry, Canelo will start getting a little bit nervous because obviously he's a boxer. I mean, yeah. Ghani's a boxer. Yeah, Canelo's very, or uh, Khan's very smart, very savvy. He's a veteran. He's been in the ring with the best guys. But, mm. you know, I, there's something about the young, confident, Fighters they have to be a big because they're playing, they're going to fight at a catch weight of one fifty five. One fifty. Are there belts on, on the line? On day, yeah, the middleweight. Yeah, where are they fighting at? Uh, MSG. Vegas, I think. Oh, Vegas. Are. Okay, I'm it's interesting because you think that one by the time they come ring night, Canelo's probably one seventy, one seventy five. Yeah. You probably think Amir. You think he walks around one seventy? Does he walk around? Yeah, yeah, apparently runs. He works around one ninety. Jesus. Yeah, that, that's he's about. He's a little bit shorter than you, but he's yeah. about. Sorry, your. Your build as well. Yeah. You're about 80 kilos. Yeah, I'm shit. I'm back up to 85. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you let yourself yeah, go buddy. between fights, have nah, you? Nah, man. Yeah, well. This, new goals? This, new goals? New goals. Just, you know what? I'm, I'm focusing a little less on, um, you know, I'm focusing just more on what makes me happy. I love training. You know, it, it's my medicine. It's my therapy. But mm. it seems like when I went from, you know, 92 kilos to 80, and it, it, I just felt like I, was, I wasn't enjoying things as much. So, Do you find you sleep better at 85? Um, it's something that, you know, maybe I should be writing sleep. I used to write sleep patterns down when I'd wake up and comment. Um, my sleep as of late has been awesome. Yeah. I think maybe that maybe has to do with I'm writing eating more. a little bit more carbs as well? I don't count that stuff. Yeah. Would I, you I, say on a general basis you might be eating a little I had, bit more I had a sandwich yesterday. Yeah. I had bread yesterday for the first time. And, you know, I went, I was very disciplined to get to 80. I, I didn't eat any. You were uh, very disciplined. I wasn't eating actually. rice. I wasn't eating bread. But it's not like I eat that stuff every day. Yeah. Um, and I just feel I probably 80, 45 is my natural walk around weight. Not 92, not 80. 80, I felt a little dried out, but mm. but um, I'm feeling good now. Let's talk a little bit about we, there's there's a, a couple fights coming up, man. We got we got our boy John Wayne Parr getting ready for a brawl. Yeah, he's on. The you got 5th your boy March. Billy. Fifth of March, he's gonna be fighting. So we're gonna have uh, John coming on preview in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, he's also going to be talking a little bit about um, his boy Noodles. If you've uh, you've probably seen him, he's become a bit of an internet sensation. Yeah, Noodles. He's been taking punches from his coach, Mark Hunt, and then Mark Hunt as well. Yeah. Um, and he's obviously faced his own issues in his own life. He just, he's, he's handling himself. So didn't he just want to fight? Yeah, he just won his first fight and he's yeah. lost a lot of weight. So good for him. So big shout out to Noodles. I like the relationship John Wayne has with Noodles. I like how he. I, I don't know the relationship like personally. Mentor, I'll so ask. Him. I'll ask John that when we speak to him again. But I he defends him and. Man, John's energy. 
Yeah. Like, he's just a kind human. You, it's pretty, it's that awesome paradigm of, like, seeing this kind human and then putting him in the in the cage, in the ring. Yeah. He's just fucking well, just brutal. Two different beasts, so. Yeah. Jeez. And then you, we got Billy Dibb, man. We've yeah, been waiting Billy for Dibb's his comeback for a while. Billy fighting in Bankstown on Friday. Uh, Is it the end of February? And it's going to be in Bankstown. His uh, little brother's also going to be on the we're card. We're going to that fight, right? So, yeah, we are. Yeah. So, I know. we're going to get Billy back on next week. Yeah, I'm excited. Billy's such a good kid, man. Also, get to meet his brother. So, we're going to be awesome. a little bit of a profile on his. Uh, Yusuf Dib as well. Yeah, so. he's won his last pro. Was his pro yeah, debut? Pro, pro debut. Yeah, won, won by knockout in no, the first round. Uh, was the left hand? Uh, right hand. It was the right, right hand. Right hand straight. Okay. Just caught him. Yeah, yeah, I heard you. Yeah, you wrote something about that. It was pretty good. So yeah, we're excited about that. Um, the the future is looking um, for our listeners and for us as well because what we're doing is we're in this together. Tristan and I, while we're doing these, I'm always taking notes. Tristan as well. We're learning, but. The people we bring on aren't only speaking. The questions we are asking them are being produced from our from our followers, our listeners, our clients. Mm. And I feel that way we could all learn together. So th- the upcoming weeks look really awesome. With we have everything from top five Hall of Fame <laughs> greatest yeah. fighters of all time. I'm not going to name drop, but I'm so excited about it. If you like boxing, stay tuned. Yeah, absolutely. We got some icons of the MMA sport, the female M- women's MMA coming up, especially in Australia. We have um, a pioneer of the sport, a couple um, firsts in terms of women's MMA. I'm excited about that one. Cool. Who else you got? You thinking of? Um, actually, I was going to tell everyone um, fan questions. We just added a little few fan questions. So if you guys want to get involved, so me and Johnny, like we do, we'd like to recap at the end of shows. But you know, we've also got a little bit of time to talk. If you needed to get some nutritional training advice, maybe just a little bit of motivation, anything you want to hear from. In specific, be yeah, be as specific as possible and send them through. We'll go through them. We've got a little bit in the pile at the moment, and we'll be featuring those in the next couple. couple yeah, Romanella gave us an awesome shot. Well, I, I, one of my clients asked me to ask you actually, where did you? Because if you guys listen regularly, first off, I say thank you. But the five, the dinner party question, that's Tristan, man. It's a that that question is becoming a little bit of a dessert. <laughs> if you look at our old podcast as a entre, as a main entree, yeah. And um, where'd you get? Was that? Did you nice just come on? Yeah, Romanella loved it. That okay. shout. Yeah. Five people you would invite to dinner. Dead or alive. Dead or alive. Doc Holiday, the Cowboy. <laughs> Doc Holiday, without even thinking about it. Um, Van Morrison, musician. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this is tough, man. Let me. See. There has to be a writer. Robert Frost, I would throw on there. He's one of my favorite poets. Um, athletes, Ken Griffey Jr. He was probably one of my favorite baseball players of all time. I know I'm gonna I'm butchering this because there's somebody that I'm gonna forget because there's just too many. Muhammad Ali. I love in his prime. I'd love to have Ali as a 25 year old. Nice at my dinner party. Cassius Clay. Yeah, yeah. And Mama called him Clay. I'm gonna call him Clay. <laughs> I'm going. I've got Mike Tyson. Yeah. I won't take Cassius because he's already going to your place. Yeah. So I can't. Yeah. Take well, him. we could have a collective 10 group. I'd like Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Eddie, yeah, Ed, Eddie's an interesting one. You can't go wrong with Eddie Murphy, man. Will Smith. Okay, I see a pattern here, young man. Uh, what, are, what, three? Anthony Mundine. Really? Mm-hmm. Mundine. Chalk. He's a good dude, man. I didn't realize that yeah, his we'll stance. We'll talk yeah, to him very soon. He's coming out. Yeah, I didn't realize his stance on alcohol and drugs, man. And five. I'm going to go. Number five. Notice we didn't pick any women. See, we are at peace mm. with ourselves. See, that shows a confident we'll get man. Some, we'll get some later. Yeah. <laughs> Just joking. Yeah. Um, five, I would pick Sylvester Sly. Sly. Sly is a very, in my opinion, one of the best writers. Mm. Very underrated writer. But yeah, so uh, the question has become popular. Thank you for asking me. I've always, I guess I never thought about it. And then, um, yeah, guys, if you're listening, send us some emails. You know, you know where Tristan's at at Tristan at TristanCanalFitness.com. Yeah. Johnny at TheRealFitCoach.com. Yeah, tell us who you want to invite to your dinner party. Yeah, or email us on the podcast, info at TheVisionBoardPodcast.com. Yeah, that yeah. one, that email seen uh, finding more uh, popularity as of late. That's probably the easiest collectively, but if you want to get a hold of us individually, feel free to contact us on that. Absolutely. Check us out on Twitter. Twitter. Yeah, the Vision Board, Vision Board Pod. My Twitter account is Johnny Stofko. Tristan is Tristan Cannell. Tristan Cannell Fitness. You're on Instagram. Absolutely. But, um, yeah, so, guys, again, we really appreciate your support. So, um, big shout-out to all our family, friends, and just followers we haven't even met. 
um, for subscribing and just leaving us those five star reviews. So I really appreciate that. If you haven't done it yet, it's so just a quick little button. You're probably listening right now, so you can just quickly switch over. Just search the Vision Board Podcast if you're on iTunes or on your podcast app. It will come up, and all you got to do is just go into reviews, and then it says write a review. Just click that little button, and if you could do that, we will be much appreciated. Yeah, that's that's something that we we take a lot of. Um, we put a we love the kindness we're being shown, the support we're being shown. People are coming up to us at our gym. You know, our gym, our health club's like a little community. So it starts from within the club. So it just gives us more motivation to keep pushing forward. This is a this is a baby to us. This is like our it, our whole goal is to learn and to share knowledge. So any support is um, very appreciated. So we thank you all for that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, like Johnny said, do get in touch. Um, like we've said a number of times. Um, it's definitely not going to be a computer or an assistant. We do not have assistance, so we'll be writing back, and we do it regularly. So please get in touch, um, follow the pages, and we'll have plenty of awesome guests from a variety of genres. Like you've already mentioned, you've got we've got some champion boxers coming up, but yep. we've got a yoga specialist coming up. Yoga to, specialist. We got a we call new couple of nutritionists, fitness entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs coming on. We got an author coming on. coming on. So yeah, there's going to be a wide range of people coming on. So that's what kind of what we want to do. We want to, you know. Get little bits out of everyone to kind of you know, put those stories out there and kind of think you build can, relationships yeah. and connect each other Thanks. because that's what we're doing too. It was awesome to see one of our sponsors pop up on um, uh, Michelle's page. Yeah, Michelle yeah. Watterson. Yeah, the Karate Hottie, Mad Love. If you're listening, hashtag Karate Hottie. Yeah, we, she ended up. Our sponsors show us a lot of love, um, yeah. and they take care of our guests. So. Mad love to the organic trainer. Yeah, uh, we'll well. hit them up in a second. I wanted to drop a little quote on you. I've been reading some Van Dyke. Do you know Henry Van Dyke? Mm. It's some writing I was re- working on. It's about time. The, the T-I-M-E, no pun intended, with, it's about time. But he talks about time is too slow for those who wait, too swift for those who fear, too long for those who grieve, too short for those who rejoice. But those who love, time is eternity. And speaking about staying in the moment, what Brown, Matt Brown was talking about, what we talk about the fear, mm. time is one of those things that of anything, all things, we cannot control. So That's true. the one thing we can't control is what exudes out of us. And, and hopefully, you know, it's to everyone. It's choosing love. It's being happy. It's being supportive. It's saying thank you and I'm sorry too. So. Yeah, more than anything, that's what we're all about. But that's one of those things that um, time's the most precious commodity. Yeah, you can't get it back. You can go, you can go broke and you can get it back. Yeah. You can't get time back. You can't get time back, man. So don't waste your time, don't waste others' time. Live with intent. Absolutely. Um, there was actually something I saw the other day. Um, I'll have to look it up again, but it was a famous actor. Yep. His wife passed away Okay. over the last weekend. And he wrote a touching thing on Facebook yeah. about not wasting time. Yeah. About um, making the most of your time with loved ones. And yeah, it's very about, important. Yeah. So it, it was quite a touching little thing. It's I'll just, try and find it. And sometimes more, yeah, let's send it over, man. I'll definitely read it. Oh, the, I know who it was. The guy from Taken. What's his name? Oh, the badass no, dude. No, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, the way he's in everything. He's, he's in all those. Everything. I'm bad with those he's names. He's in A Team and all that sort of movies. What's his name? Um, right. I'm sure it was him. Yeah, he's he, he, Liam Neeson. Liam Neeson. Yeah, yeah I'm badass. Sure, it was him. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, that's one thing that um, we can't we, we can't control. Like you know what we do with our time, and make sure you choose it wisely. Uh, that this platform is for positivity and inspiration. And if we can inspire somebody who's maybe listening and they're just they don't know what direction to take, first direction is forward. Take a step forward. Like Matt said, man, making his bed. We always talk about that. Mm. He, you know, he was talking about setting goals but having small goals. And you know, if waking up in the morning and making my bed is the first thing of the day. Rather than going to social media, getting getting input rather than so you know we talk about that all the time. I always talk about jumping over the line. Yeah, you know, start with goals. Sometimes we do. Like sometimes I do check my phone too much in the mornings. My first uh, thing tomorrow I'm going to try. I'm make awful. my bed. I'm going to make my breakfast. Go for my shower. I'm and awful. Then I'll check my phone. Dude, that's where the, we're evolved. Dude, evolution, man. Where everything is going towards technology. And if you're running a business, if you're getting a business off the ground, if you're staying in contact, if you live across the world. Family members all over the world, you got to stay in contact somehow, mm. but balance is key. That's true. I just booked in a float for Sunday, which I'm super stoked about. I haven't been in the tank in about four weeks. Yeah, well, I bought yeah. my mom on for Christmas. Did so you? I have to go take her. Yeah, you got Bondi? Uh, not this weekend, but yeah, Bondi. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I just finished. Um, finally, I've been working on it for about six months, the finishing edits on um, my next ebook, uh, basically, an introductory guide to the float tank is basically finished. And what I did was outline like my personal path to the tank 
whether it's like clearing your mind through meditation, what to do, don't wear de bring deodorants in there because you mm. got to shower, time efficiency, basically little tips. So I'm excited about that. Yeah, cool, man. Um, well, we enjoy your floats. Just a big Thanks. shout out to our sponsors again. Obviously, uh, Organic Trainer. We both got a little flask in front of us at the moment. So big yeah. shout out to um, Organic Trainer, to Andrew. Yeah, Andrew's the man. You can find the Organic Trainer out at www.theorganictrainer.com. You can find that flask we're speaking of. If you go to Michelle Watterson's page, Instagram Karate Hottie, she gave it an awesome shout out. That flask can be found on their site. It's um, also you can get your exercise and recovery tea. They have some awesome flavors. They have a hibiscus flavor. They have a chamomile flavor. When you're proceeding to the checkout, use word the vision board to receive 10% off of all of your purchases. Our second sponsor is in Sydney, Australia. I'm actually going to see him in, on Friday. Jack Rabbit Slim's Barbershop, Potts Point, King's Cross. Make an appointment with Dre. He does the best work. He does lines. He does fades. He trims the beards. I'm going to actually get the hair all cut off this time and start rocking that little military fade. So I'm stoked. That's Jack Rabbit Slim's Barbershop in Sydney, Australia. Mm, big shout out to Dre. He's been Dre. boxing pretty well lately. Yeah, he's, we're actually getting ready to take him to Anton's gym. Oh, really? Yeah, he's right. He's right. He, I need to let the bird fly. You know, I can yeah. only teach him so much. Big shout out to Anton Solopop. Solopop, Anton. We'll be in touch very soon. Yeah, uh, buddy. Johnny, you have a great day, man. You too, TK. We'll chat soon. Rock and roll. Peace. Peace. <laughs> The Vision Board Podcast, hosted by Johnny Stofko and Tristan Cannell.